pieces, and we appreciate it that you chose our session. My name is uh, Sayyid Abdullah Shah Um I'm, I'm a PhD student at Washington State University. And, and I am Mohammed Al-Hais. I'm adjunct, adjunct faculty at Washington State University. Our presentation, as you know, is about uh, the process of second language socialization in a strategic online game. So uh, we start off with an activity then we'll attend to the theoretical framework of the study, and then we transition to the study, and finally we'll uh, wrap up with the question and answer section, section of this uh, presentation. So Said and I are actually new uh, presenters at TESA convention, and we are so amazed by this academic zeal. We see people from all over the world who have gathered to share their uh, scholarly findings. Um, well, since we are new members here, I have a question. What are the norms, principles, or ideas that we need to know and do in order to be competent members of this group, of TESOL group? What are some kind of norms, ideas? So what I want you to do right now is for two minutes, I want you please to find a partner, work for two minutes, and try to find ideas to help us be competent members of TESOL community. Thank you. I work with him on the Tesla EJ Tesla. Yeah. 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 Okay. So what we're doing here, all these videos that we're taking are going on to the CowIOS.tvworks.com website. And uh, I, don't have that, I don't have the selfie thing down against the computer, but now I'm getting it here. So. Anyway, so we're, you know, putting stuff online you can capture here. And you'll be able to see this uh, later. Okay. <laughs> later right after your presentation. <laughs> no, I work in the United Air we we had to ask a question actually. Sure. Are you talking about being like participating in this convention or, or being a English as second in the community? Yes, yeah. okay. yeah. oh. And are you interested in teaching adults or kids or high school students adults. or whatever wherever you choose. That's okay. You will choose adults or kids. All right, two minutes is gone. All right, can I share answers, please, now? Okay. Any brave soul here? Can you please share answers here? Some advice, yes? Uh, we got two, two facets. One is general convention going, like understanding how exhibits work and workshops work and how to navigate the three buildings that we have to be in and all the rooms and floors mm -hmm. uh, and understanding like the program. Mm -hmm. And then two, the, the understanding TESOL itself or the, the fact that we're in an ELL-centric uh, community of uh, individuals who are either teaching or administrating, researching um, uh, ELL individuals or some form of that. Perfect, perfect, thank you. Huh? Else? Ah, travel funds. In the more general category here, it's uh, you have to be like open to other people's communities and their cultures, and, you know, accept their ideas, or at least try to be understanding of them at the very least. 
least. Absolutely, absolutely. This is the main thing, actually. Thank you so much, guys, for your share here. So, in other words, in order to affiliate to a group, we need to share the same goals, the norms, the principles to position ourselves as a legitimate members of this community. Um, this actually takes us to the definition of second language socialization. All right, so according to Shefflin and Ock, um, individuals become competent members of social groups and the role of language in this process. What it means here is that this process explains how individuals become competent members in a group. It also explains how learners' identities as language learners evolve through group participation. This um, uh, second language, actually, second language of socialization is actually a first, uh, first language acquisition. Actually, um, it relies on social learning, social uh, theories of language learning, which actually um, the main thing here is legitimate peripheral participation by Lave and Winnegar. Sorry, this word is so hard to pronounce. Winger. Okay, <laughs> please forgive me. Okay, all right. So, in, in other words, in this process. People um, co-construct new knowledge, and they acquire new ideas through participation and socialization with a group, or in a group. Um, in this process also, less competent people or members become more competent people, and then later they become, they pass their knowledge on onto new members. Um, also, so I know that you have a question right now, okay, what? How does this relate to language socialization? Or what are the elements or the factors that lead to language socialization and learning? Well, first we're gonna watch a short video and then we are going to talk about these important elements. Thanks very much, Eric. We just have the next challenge for our team. So I guess this is kind of like a famous puzzle here in America, right? Yeah. Oh, okay, because I, when I first came here, my American friend, of course, asked me this question, and it took me like hours and hours to figure out, and I could have So, in this group dynamic, um, if you notice this group, every member of this group, they have, oh, can you, that's what that's right. They have shared goal, one goal, which is solving the problem, which is solving the puzzle. They interacted with one another. 
there's kind of like social interaction during the uh, when they are solving the problem. Um, also, they were scaffolding one another. Everybody was giving some kind of scaffolding. And of course, there was negotiating meaning, which is solving, solving the problem. The main thing here is everybody was giving and receiving feedback. These elements are very, very important in any social dynamic, in any, any group dynamic. If you look carefully at these elements, you will see that we actually use these elements when we communicate or we interact with any group, okay? And if you go back to our question, the question I gave you at the beginning, you will see that we have one goal, we ask questions, we receive and get feedback, okay? So I will leave the rest of the presentation for Sayyid, who's going to talk about the study. Okay. Thank you very much. Well, thank you very much, everyone. Uh, the study we conducted uh, uh, was actually uh, in the context of a game, so which is also a kind of uh, group work activity in which everybody has a goal, and the goal is to dominate the world, so and everybody needs to be uh, participating in the communi communal uh, goal of the, you know, uh, the whole, the whole, uh, the, whole uh, the whole game. So uh, the setting was the game A Stronghold Kingdoms, which is a multiplayer online game. So the methodology we adopted in our study was a narrative inquiry, so because we thought that the best way to see what's going on inside a game is to listen to the stories told by the members of the, uh, the, the game community. So the participants in our study were uh, one language learner or gamer, which uh, we consider as the protagonist of the study. So uh, we had four English-speaking gamers. Uh, the data sources we uh, employed in our study were records, uh, chat threads, uh, messages exchanged over chat while the uh, participants were playing and we conducted interviews with the protagonist of the study and we had a focus group with the other uh, four English speaking games. So the research questions of the study were uh, what can be learned about the process of second language socialization from the stories of participants in an MMOG? So we were listening to their stories, actually. And the second question was, uh, what are the linguistic norms and practices in the game, game community of practice? So with these questions, so uh, we approached the set. But before we uh, continue to the study results, uh, let's, uh, uh, share, uh, let's see what uh, a language learner and a gamer have in common. According to G2003, both language gamer and uh, a, a gamer and a language learner need to master a semiotic domain, which is a new language. So they both need to participate in an affinity group. They need to commit to learning. So it involves a process of committed learning for both types of uh, uh, members of the community. So both need to develop an identity. The gamer needs to develop a gamer identity. The language learner needs to develop a linguistic identity or a language identity. Both uh, go through ongoing, uh, an ongoing learning process without psychosocial moratoriums. They fail. They, there might be failures. There might be problems. But it's also free to try. And both. Uh, in both learning processes, there are various modalities. In a game, there are videos, there are images, there are sounds. For a language learner, also, these modalities exist. And finally, uh, through both uh, group activities, uh, the two types of learners actually uh, develop cultural models through interaction with other interlocutors. So these are the four instances of MMOGs for language learning according to G2003. So in the game community of practice, the Stronghold Kingdoms, of course, we're not condoning any game or any, uh, you know, it's not about a particular game. Game is only a setting and, a, and only a, uh, a tool that we investigated because of our position, positionality and our past experiences. So let's see the game trailer for, for now, see how what the game entails and what the gamers actually experience throughout their gameplay.
Greetings, sir. Your kingdom awaits. Stronghold kingdoms. Your village is one of a thousand others. <coughs> Make it the pride of the parish. Construct your settlements to maximize their potential. Use special cards to your advantage. Tailor make your personal avatar. Explore new disciplines to gain the upper hand. Everything from salt working to siege mechanics. Hundreds of quests and achievements to challenge and reward you. Gather your forces, fight for glory, and dominate the land. Can you handle the pressure? The ultimate stronghold. Ready your defenses. And prepare for a medieval strategy experience unlike any other. As you just <coughs> watched, uh, so the game is actually a community of practice. So in order to survive in this battle, in this challenge, players need to band together and they need to coordinate action. They need to communicate with each other so, so that they can. I'm sorry, I know you're having Q&A later, but could you tell us a little bit about um, the age of the participants yeah, or how it, you selected the sure, people? Sure, sure. In the next slide, we have a section on participants. Okay. Yeah. Well, uh, so let's move on to the next slide. So, <laughs> <laughs> so the participants in the game were, uh, were actually a, uh, a Serbian protagonist. The, the reason we chose him was the fact that he wasn't, he, he was not a native English speaker, so he needed to master he needed English to communicate with other gamers. He was playing an English <coughs> world, so in which every other member of the community were speaking in English. So he had to develop the linguistic skill required to communicate with those uh, co-players. So another reason was uh, his rank in the game. So the game potentially houses one million players, so he was the 16th member of the game meant that he was a very professional, competent member of the game. And he, was, he had many awards, 2018, sorry, 218, had completed 196 quests, had 40 villages, which was the maximum number of villages a player could have, and he had different social roles in the game. He was a faction leader, he was a sheriff, he was a steward. So, and he had played the game for five years, so he was a he was, a, he was recognized as a very competent player of the game. So the reason we chose him in our study was mainly because he, he as a non-native English speaker, it required a lot to, to, to reach this position in the game. And the other faction, uh, the other player, uh, participants in the game were actually faction members of this protagonist. So they had played the game for more than two years, so all of them were native English speakers, one from UK, the other is from US. They had also social roles. They were less uh, important roles in the game. They were steward positions, but they were considered social roles. And as you know, as you can see, the ranks in the game was lower compared to 
higher compared to the uh, protag protagonist of this story. So, Emil, the Serbian uh, participant of our study, was the one we actually listened to, to, to see how the process has taken him to the place he was. Uh, Eric, uh, Jen, and Jack uh, were, were the players. We actually invited them to a focus group and listened to their stories about Emil, their, the faction leader, to see if he actually is a com considered by the faction's members, faction members as a competent player of the game. So, the results of uh, open and actual coding of 232 in-game forum threads, which com uh, comprise 1,241 messages, led to uh, this finding, that uh, 32, almost 33% 33 of the chat messages in the game were uh, related to some form of communication and coordination of action. Around almost 23% of the chat messages were about gaming skills, and 16% of the messages were about code of conduct, how players should act in the game to be considered a, you know, a good comrade, good player, good co-player, and around 15% were about dedication to the game. So in, a, in, in the next slide, we're, we're going to show you what the categories, <coughs> individual codes and categories of these themes were. And finally, about 13% of the messages were about some real life uh, issue. So as you can see, uh, communication and coordination were uh, among uh, the highest uh, concentration of uh, messages so and as you as and, and of course for other four you know category, uh, concepts or themes in the study there we need communication to achieve those two it's not about just communication alone so uh, so these five concepts or themes were the norms of the community where the players needed to affiliate to, they needed to stick to. So, as with communication and coordination, uh, we learned that uh, different peace, peace or wartime communication or coordination channels like social threads, activity threads, supply threads, monkey support thread, sending proclamations, negotiations, sending mass invitations, recruitment of players, discussing the strategies. So, we're part of the you know, their uh, commit communication and coordination commitments of the players in peacetime or wartime uh, times. So, some of the uh, chat messages were about uh, arranging some form of third party audio chat type of communications, which is, they, there were frequent references to TeamSpeak, Discord, Raid Call, Facebook to coordinate action, especially in times of war where the participant needed to, to be actively engaged and be uh, very, uh, they, they needed to re send and receive messages very quickly to survive in the atmosphere of war. And also there were references to high profile communication or co coordination efforts at different levels, faction leaders, house generals, uh, parish stewards, county sheriffs, province governors, and country kings, alliances, etc. So, as to the second theme, what took, uh, what, what, what made a player, a skillful player, there were also categories and, uh, involved in the process, how, how we could decide if a player was, uh, was, had the required skills to be called a competent player. So, it was usually based on their position in the leader, leadership board, so it was about peacetime actions, so having a strong economy, building fortifications, and etc. Et and being a warrior was considered a, an important theme, uh, an important category in our data analysis, in our findings. So performing timed attacks, being a breaker, supplier, monker, combo player, defending against time attacks, pillaging, ransacking, and all the technical skills which was required to, uh, to be uh, considered a competent a skillful player. 
So the third uh, concept in our findings were about being honest, which, which was about uh, the code of conduct. So having no alternative accounts, respecting leadership, so adhering to le leadership decisions about the location of active players, villages, capturing villages only by permission. So these all of these required actually some form of communication to 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 be honest, to be to be to respect the leadership, to send messages back and forth, back and forth with the different with different authorities in the game. So responding to the activity checks within two to three days, contact participations in elections, constant participation in elections, and supporting other members. They were also considered to be. Uh, the responsibilities of active or competent players in the game. And dedication also was about being active. Being active meant donating goods to, par to the parish, warm to active, coordinated efforts, voting, greeting newcomers, and coaching them, sharing the strategies, collaborating on communication threads, protecting other players' assets in their absence, cleaning the parish of disease points regularly, and dealing with rogue players. So it, it constituted dedication. Uh, if a player was dedicated, so he or she should have been, act, you know, been good at all these subcategories. And finally, some real life issues. Non-game issues included daily life, relationships, politics, pets, music, technology, etc. So this was, this, uh, these findings were all emerged from our analysis of Chat, chat threads or forum threads, and later on, based on these categories, <coughs> we approached the uh, players, uh, the particip other participants of the study, and just conducted interviews and focus groups with them, and which we're here presenting some of their results with. So the results of the study. So we learned that non-native English speakers need to develop a functional linguistic proficiency throughout the game. And here is some evidence uh, from our uh, from from Jen. So Jen uh, says, I think that people can play the game in isolation, but if you do, you do, do you? Um, you will get bored. To stay for a long time, you need to feel part of a team, and to do that, effective communication is key. So it goes to the question: if if a non-native English speaker can or Emil, as the protagonist of the story, can lead the others, despite the fact that his English <coughs> proficiency was not accurate. And there were frequent grammatical mistakes, grammatical errors in his messages. So, so the second uh, finding of this study was non-native English speakers adopt a variety of strategies to function if effectively in the game and use their game skills to compensate for the lacks in their linguistic skills. Here we have some uh, ex excerpts from uh, Emil's you know, response to this question that how, how can you be a faction leader? So he says, when I started to play, I was not that much open for communication with other people. What will or can I speak with them? From where are they? Will I understand them? Where some of the questions? Where some of the questions? But as the time has passed, I was more and more communication with people. Now I'm involved as a house general in about 15 active threads, and I get a lot of mails. Also, I use Google Translate option sometimes. It gives few words for one a Serbian, so I look for one that looks better in use, and I see also how it is being written. As you can see, there are uh, grammatical mistakes and spe spelling mistakes, gramma grammatical mistakes, all forms of grammatical mistakes in the excerpt. But he manages to still uh, lead the faction and be the main player in the faction. So another piece of evidence was uh, uh, through the as assumption of social rules in the game, non-native English speakers uh, attempt to actively engage in adopting target language forms to perform the duties effectively. And we got some evidence from Emil too. He says, uh, the so a social role for me means to be the kind of person who likes to talk to others and engage with them, perhaps over a chat server like TeamSpeak or Discord. 
still another evidence is native speakers tend to discard the non-native English speakers' ill-formed linguistic constructions when the player is skillful in the game. So as long as the player is skillful, so it doesn't matter if the linguistic forms are ill-formed. And we have evidence from Eric. So uh, playing online games means interaction with people of other languages. And I figured out that just uh, asking for the meaning if you don't understand the meaning is the best way to communicate. You always find a way to speak together. And finally, uh, both writing and audio chat applications are preferred means of communication for both non-native English, native English speakers and non-native English speakers. So Emil, for example, says, I was more active in team speak in the past, but now I don't have time for it, plus my kids are making noise, so I, <laughs> so I can't communicate with people in there. And Jen, the female participant of the study says, I love Discord. Discord is a third-party application for gamers. So I love Discord. I can't believe how I managed to be on many text threads before. And Jack, so all the conversations were happening in, in the textual mode of the uh, Discord. So, and Jack says, you're texting now too. So it was all text. So they didn't use the voice? Uh, uh, yeah, of course they did, but uh, not for the purpose of uh, the focus group. So uh, we were typing. Mm, uh, okay. Four of us were typing at the same time. <coughs> oh, we have one more. And the social relationships in the game tend to extend to other non-game non situations. So we have an expert from uh, uh, the, the, the focus group. I will miss you all when the world ends mostly. So <laughs> the, the game we were playing was about to end. So. And Jack says, oh, uh, don't even talk stuff like that. And Eric says, I'm playing this game lately only because of other players, not because of game itself. And Jen says, uh, for in another, you know, it's another uh, piece of evidence, that uh, I have lasting friendship that have sp spanned nearly 10 years, one resulting in a mid-long-term relationship of a different character. So <laughs> social relationships do not the stage just in the game, just pass on to other non-game settings. All right, and then we're done with our presentation. Uh, if there are any questions, uh, we'll be more than happy to. Of course. I know you're dreading my question, say, but um, <laughs> so so what is the what's the big so what? what? What are you trying to tell us about what our students should do or what we should do as teachers? The thing that most concerns me here. By the way, I like the way you changed your questions. Um, is that you said that the other the native speakers discard the mistakes so that they're not really modeling maybe or they're not really helping the non-native speakers linguistically. So what do you think about that? Oh, it's not. Uh, thank you very much for the question, first. And thanks for taking the time to come to our presentation, Dr. Eckberg. Of course. Uh, 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 so uh, in the game community, co uh, action is important. So. As long as a player can uh, get the message across and only communicate and is able to communicate proficiently uh, about the game, the gaming strategies, gaming, uh, the gaming goals. So it, yeah, it suffices. That's that's true. But there are times when other players also uh, try to so the, they pick up language from the communications of, of other uh, players of the game. So. Emil, for example, the protagonist of the story, as you can see, is able to produce some language. And it's true that there are still problems in it, but he apprentices to the language that is produced by other native English speakers of the game. And that's probably what we want in our classes too, that we are exposing them to input, and we expect them to uptake, to take, to take from uh, the, the correct grammatical you know, uh, grammatical languages we expose them to and uh, develop the linguistic uh, linguistic repertoire that we want them to have. So it's not uh, always, uh, it's not always uh, ill-formed probably, it hasn't been like this before, probably has changed through time to get to this to this state. So I mean, probably will lead to more learning. Do you have that data yeah. about him five years ago and him now? Oh, no, I don't have that, yeah. But th that's good to dig in and, and 
contact him for that data. Thanks. Thank you. Oh, sorry. Quick question. Like, uh, we sure. saw some of his, like, uh, grammar and spelling and surface level errors. Sure. What about, like, meaning issues? Like, where his teammates, especially, it sounds like they're all subordinates. Like, what, did any of those instances happen where he's trying to get a message across and it's lost somehow? And does, what does that look like and what happens next? Uh, I have actually... We, we had uh, lots of data that we couldn't include in our uh, presentation, but we are going to publish a paper of the findings of this study. Uh, you, you may uh, contact us for uh, the data or uh, the paper, hopefully, in the future, if, you, uh -huh. if you're interested. But uh, uh, there are times when misunderstanding, when misunderstanding, uh, misunderstanding happens, actually. So it's, it's, it's normal. But in the in the game community of you know in this in the game as long as you you're around for for, for, for for a while so you know how things go so the main things are not lost so maybe surface level uh, types of miscommunications happen but the general idea is the same the language is fixed or almost you know you know the language of pillaging you know the language of raising you know the language of supplying these commu uh, actually uh, communicative acts. You know how to ask for favors, you know how to, how to challenge someone, how to uh, do all game-related you know, challenges and quests. So, but there certainly are some uh, miscommunications. Thank you. Cool. Um, did Emil uh, ever use English in the real world? Like, was he practicing? Was he in a class? Or you know, what did he use English for outside of the game at all? So he was actually in another uh, in in another uh, excerpt in another uh, as a another piece of evidence. He said uh, that he has been learning English for from elementary school since elementary school, and he used it all around him. That's what I'm quoting. So, the language is in English. The, the books are in English. Are in English. So, and uh, we need English to communicate. That's not uh, just the game. So, I, according to him, the only he considers his writing to be developed specifically in the game, while his uh, speaking skill has stayed the same mostly. That's that's according to. Uh, Emil and our conversations. But uh, for sure, Ser Serbia is a country where, according to Emil, people travel to. And he can find uh, native English speakers to, to, to communicate. Sure. Thank you for the presentation. I think it was very thought provoking. I really believe in games for learning, and I'm making an, an attempt to design a strategy game for business English. Uh, myself with English language learning content, mm -hmm. uh, but it's an immersive story like this with some fewer rules, not so much freedom. Uh, and my question is, um, if you were to use a strategy game like this for teaching, mm -hmm. um, do you have any suggestions of how you could create, you know, a, like a project on the side, or how would you use this game in your classroom? Uh, I personally do not. Thanks very much for the question. Yeah. So I personally won't use this game in my classroom because it condones, uh, uh, you know, uh, the, the the concept of a uh, uh, hierarchical society. Um. So and there are specific norms about it to be to be adopted by several papers, uh, so several the, all, all the participants. For example, when they approach a leader, they need to use the language. So my my lord or my lady or so so. We, we don't want that in our classes, but the whole notion of uh, challenge, interaction, engagement, uh, these are all about, uh, these need to be included in an educational game we want to create some, sometime. Uh, one more question. So I didn't realize, you said that, um, so they know the language of those pillaging and whatever those set things within the game are. Does the, do you think that that, um, kind of 
puts a, a barrier, well, puts a barrier on what kind of language they're going to use. Is there a set type of speech, a set kind of number of words that they won't go outside of? So once they kind of know this, where do they go is the question for me? Sure. Um, these are the norms of the community where, uh, where players get together. They gather around these in the game. That's their shared goals. But there are lots of other creative, creative, creative expressions, constructions built around these notions. So it's not just, so yeah, that's a very good question actually. So how can we sh be sure if this language they learned can actually transform or transfer to other non-game settings, which we expect them to, to be using language for actually. So we can't go out and just talk about pillaging. Right. So, so, but the language created around these shared game uh, related concepts and elements is actually real life language, which was about 13% of the communications in the game, which it was based on a limited, you know, a portion of, you know, chat messages we extracted. There, there's certainly more than that. When your participants were playing synchronously, were there other players in the same server interacting, or was it a private game with just your four participants? So most of this data was collected in Discord, actually. Okay. And in Discord, you can create channels with faction members being included. So no, that, that was just a private channel that uh, the factions me faction members uh, were all part of. Okay. But we focus on the language produced by uh, the protagonist and the other three participants. Thank you. Um, I was just gonna say I really appreciate like the way that you pointed out like very specific literacy skills that people are doing. I feel like that's kind of related to some of my own research is thinking about gaming as literacy um, and how this kind of models entering a discourse community. Mm -hmm. um, I was actually wondering, do you guys already have your um, like where you're going to be publishing this article? Um, uh -huh. Where can I draw from it in the future? <laughs> um, <laughs> of course, uh, we have some uh, uh, places, some venues to submit it to. So, uh, the Journal of uh, 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 Virtual Worlds is where we are. We're going to try. We, we are not sure if uh, it's going to be actually published there, but. Uh, there are several computer-assisted language learning journals also in the field, which we are going to probably submit to. But our first uh, option is going to be probably Journal of uh, Virtual Worlds. It's a it's a it's a non-profit, uh, so free journal with all sorts of articles related to gaming and their application and education. <laughs> Sorry, mom is sitting there. Okay, if there is any questions specifically for mom. Oh. Question for you. Um, sure. Actually, two questions. How did you go about choosing this specific MMO? And mm -hmm. is there a reason maybe why? And then do you believe that maybe this could be reapplied to de novo or in a new situation with language learners who have never been an existing gamer mm -hmm. and using it as an additional tool to augment their language learning and, um, um, app and kind of learning that and getting more language skills? Sure. Uh, I, uh, so the, the choice we made was basically uh, based on my five years of gaming and of playing in this game. So then we met Mohammed and so we, he took, took over so some of our communal work. But I, was, I, I personally played this game for, for five years before coming to the US. So I had access to a lot of data and. Uh, I was an active, competent player of the community too, so I knew people, I could contact them, I could elicit their accounts, their stories. So most of it resulted from my own uh, positionality. So also this specific game was considered to be, uh, was recognized as the number one downloaded MMO in uh, 2010, I believe. So we need to check, and yeah, the, the statistics, the survey conducted is out there. So we thought that let's combine these. So this game has been played with by, by most gamers out there, and I have been playing it too, so I have access to lots of data, I have access to uh, 
to, to uh, high rank enough players in the game, so why not to conduct a research on, on that? So, and the, cons the, 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 the idea of this study was not uh, this specific game. We were just wanting to know how uh, the no concept, uh, the notion of communities of practice and legitimate peripheral participation works in, a, in an online community like this specific MMO. So again, though, but regarding just a new application, say you have a classroom of English language learners who are looking for an additional way to maybe augment their acquisition. Would, do you think it would be applicable to kind of take maybe this whole spin, not necessarily this game, Struggle of Kingdoms, but introduce them to an MMO which would allow them contact with an English-speaking community online that might help them improve in the classroom? For sure, yeah. There are actually some uh, uh, different stories around this. Some believe that uh, gaming is a waste of time. So some also believe that gaming is the future of education. So I personally... Uh, uh, subscribe to the idea that gaming is the future of uh, education and uh, children or students, players, game learners basically just attend games and play games more actively than they attend classes. So, <laughs> so and what, 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 what do we want? <coughs> so while they attend their classes with hesitation sometimes, so mostly sometimes, so uh, they attend games and spend long hours of gameplay outside their classes. So if we can make some, some form of uh, uh, shift in our education system to, to have games as virtual classes, so and at the same time that they're engaged in the gameplay, we communicate to them their uh, to educational uh, aspects of you know, educational uh, ideas, educational teachings, so why not? So we can use games in our education too. Okay, <laughs> thank you. Thank you very much. Thanks for attending our uh, session. And please feel free to contact us for data or our paper, future paper, hopefully. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.